Ian Boswell is the consummate pro. We had the pleasure to ride his Grand Fondo this fall, meet his family, and learn about his transition from World Tour Pro to what sounds like an equally, albeit different, career path in 2020. So maybe just kind of give us a little history, what happened, uh, the, you know, the sort of all, how it all went together, basically. Yeah, well, I'll start um, going way back, you know, to even to 2018. I had a, a really successful year. Um, it was my first year with Katusha Alpesen, and, you know, I'd come to that team from Team Sky at the time to ride the Tour de France. And, and I rode the Tour in 2018, and, you know, in a lot of ways, it was my best season to date, just as far as, you know, kind of the progress I made and kind of the steps I made towards, you know, being a tour rider and, and participating in that event. And I learned a lot and was hoping in 2019 to, to go back with the experience I'd gained. Um, and 2019 started off pretty similar to every other year. You know, I spent a lot of time in Vermont in the winter and, uh, you know, it was just gradually building up through the spring. And I was in Torino Adriatico. Um, it was my first European stage race of the year. Um, I'd done Mallorca Challenge and Tour of Oman prior. Um, and on stage four, I had a bit of a, it was more of a, a fluke incident, um, just a crash on a downhill, still not really sure what happened. Um, and I went over the bars at pretty high speed and landed on the back of my head, which took kind of the brunt of, of force um, from the crash. I had very little road rash, nothing else was you know, nothing was broken, um, but I was left unconscious on the, on the pavement there where I crashed. Um, and, you know, the immediate thought in, in my mind when I had crashed was like, oh boy, well, you know, I, I need to get back on my bike and ride to the finish line because, you know, if I drop out on stage four, then I can't finish the rest of the race. And then you're not getting those race miles in your legs. Um, and my team director at the time was Dmitry Konachev. Um, and he had, by the time I was conscious again, the team car had gotten to me and I was like, Oh, just like, where's my bike? I want to get back on because it's, it's only three, three K to the finish um, and all downhill. And he's like, no, we have like 60 K to go. <laughs> like, we're, you're a long way from the finish and you're going to get um, from there is kind of where my journey began to the next chapter of my life. It was a long, a long process. Um, yes. Yeah, so ultimately that crash uh, changed the course of, of my life and my career. And so from, um, you know, that crash in, in the middle of March, I didn't race again for the rest of the 2019 season. And there was a lot of up and downs from, you know, from that crash until um, I decided what to do next. And there was a lot of, there was a big choice to make, you know, I, in late August, I was offered um, a contract to race on the road for the 2020 season. And eventually I came to kind of terms with things and evaluated, you know, my health and my life and, you know, kind of what I've accomplished and was able to not able to, but I, I very much consciously made the choice to walk away from road racing and pursue something different. And at this point, how long of a, a professional career are you into at that, that August when you're looking back and you're trying to make that call? Well, you know, it was, this was my, I mean, 2019, I guess we're in 2020 now, but, um, this past year was my seventh year in the world tour. Um, you know, and prior to that, I had done two years on action, a year on Bissell, a year on hot tubes, um, you know, raced in Oregon as a junior and traveled to Europe with the national team. Um, so it's really been like 15 years of pursuing, you know, that goal of being the best road racer I could be. And, you know, ultimately the goal was to ride the tour de France, which I did. And, and in many ways that, you know, having had that, um, you know, kind of in my pocket was probably made it easier for me to make that choice to walk away from road racing because, you know, while I didn't win any major races, I was able to kind of look and say, well, what, you know, what else am I looking to accomplish here? You know, I've, I've got to live in France for seven years. I've raced with some of the best riders in the Peloton. You know, I've learned a tremendous amount. Um, you know, I, I, in many ways kind of felt like the you know, ship had run its course and I was ready for a new challenge and to try something different and try something that, uh, is a bit out of my comfort zone. Tell us what's, what's happening for 2020 and what you're going to, what you're going to be up to and what you're doing and who your sponsors are. And, um, we're excited to hear about that. Yeah. So, you know, over the course of summer, I was kind of going back and forth of what 
what am I going to do next in my life? You know, I'm, I'm 28 years old. I need a job. Um, I can't just, I can't retire and, you know, start hobby farming here in Vermont. Um, I'm also still too, too motivated and too driven to, to just hang it up. Um, and I, so I had made the choice to not race and I didn't take the contract offer that was on the table at the end of August, um, very much on my own terms. And, Soon after I, you know, been speaking with Wahoo as the title sponsor of our our Fondo, um, and they offered me a job at at Wahoo um, to kind of fill a position that they didn't really have in place as you know an ambassador for one, but a liaison between the brand of Wahoo Fitness and the World Tour teams that they sponsor and some of the other athletes, whether it's triathlon um, or running or you know other endurance sports, you know, to kind of take on a role as a you know, a liaison between the athletes and brands, because I know, I know what athletes, you know, are able to do, want to do and enjoy doing. Um, so I have a, in some ways, a unique perspective that, you know, kind of uses my background to, to help them. But Wahoo's also been incredibly generous in understanding that this is very much a transition for me. And it's difficult for an athlete, especially at my age, to go straight from a professional athletic career into a an office job, you know, 40 hours a week. Well, exciting. So do you have, are you putting sort of putting together a, um, other sponsors within your race package or how are you going about all that? Well, one of the most incredible things about kind of starting this project is for the first time in my professional career, I can actually work with brands that I want to work with. Um, you know, I've, I've worked with some great brands, you know, as a pro rider. And that's part of the reason I have this relationship with Wahoo's because they've been, a part of my entire world tour career for seven years. Um, and I've used their products and we've collaborated a lot on, you know, developing stuff and working stuff out and, um, kind of making a better product, you know, continually. So I've been fortunate to, you know, have some contacts within the sporting world, um, and in the industry of cycling. And it's been pretty cool to, you know, to reach out to brands that I really want to work with. And, you know, there's brands that, you know, products that I would buy, you know, whether I was, riding next year or not and all of a sudden i'm going to be under those you know those brands umbrella so um yes yeah, so i'm going to be using specialized bikes helmets wheels saddles um pretty much a, a stock specialized bike that you would buy online with sram components you know i've been with sram for the last two years on on uh katusha and i was with them prior on on action and hot tube so i've you know been with pretty, really familiar with their products you know i'm back with science and sport after a two year hiatus at, at Katusha, even though, um, I did buy their products while, while on Katusha, because I, I really do believe in their products. So tell me, you're going to be doing some content as well, potentially a podcast, or tell me a little bit about what you guys have planned. Yeah, we, you know, as part of this project, we do want to document this transition and also the other, the other Wahoo athletes that are involved and, you know, um, there are some awesome athletes and some key players in the gravel scene. Obviously, you know, I'm, I'm kind of a, a newbie to this in a lot of ways, you know, there it's, you know, it's cycling, but there, there's a lot that I don't know, but yeah, so we were shoot, we've shot our first uh, series of our video called Wahoo Frontiers, and that's going to come out on Wednesday, the 15th of January. Um, and we have a couple other scheduled, uh, it's going to be a series that kind of documents the whole season. And, you know, we, you know, I'll document my kind of transition, but, you know, get a feel for what the gravel scene looks like. And like you said, I'm looking at starting a podcast as well during the Tour de France 2018, my friend Marshall Opal and I started the breakfast with Boz podcast and I'm looking at bringing that back this year. So when, um, are you just sort of getting your calendar? I know people are announcing where they're racing and all the events they're going to, uh, have you, um, made some decisions? Are you still, firming that up for what gravel events you're going to be at for next year. Yeah, there is a calendar in place. Um, it's to a degree, sometimes it changes. I was actually down in Atlanta earlier this week um, at Wahoo headquarters down there. And we decided that we're going to be heading out to old man winter in Boulder. So I've been, uh, which I should be prepared for winter because I am in Vermont. Um, but I'm definitely doing some panic training on my kicker down in the basement just to try and get ready because I've seen that a lot of the other athletes who are attending are uh, out in California now training uh, training in warmer weather. Um, so that'll be the first event of the year. And then I'll be at um, Mid-South Gravel. I'll be out at Sea Otter, Belgian Waffle Ride, Dirty Kanza, 
Oregon Trail will kind of be my kind of coming home to to Oregon and Bend, um, which is an awesome event. I love stage racing and the gravel stage race sounds really cool. Um, probably be actually heading back over to the Tour de France after that for the few days in Nice to do some some media and content stuff there. And then I'll be back for for rooted Vermont steamboat gravel and then I think our uh, peach and fall fondo. The Gravel Plus revealed its true character on the first ride. It's a racer and it loves to go fast. What Pinarello did at the rear triangle works. Max energy from the crank set to the hub and max efficiency to keep that power planted to the gravel. The chain stays in the laid back position all contribute to that super responsive feel with loads of stability and confidence in the dirt.